I like virtue ethics, the ethics which focuses upon the quality of one's character rather than upon one's obedience to one's duties or attentiveness to the consequences of one's behaviour. I happen to think virtue ethics would be particularly useful in progressive politics, at least more use than the current duty-based orthodoxy. That's why I'm making this series of seven videos in which I respond to common criticisms of virtue ethics, as a resource to counter the inevitable objections to this claim, both from the political right and from the political left as it currently stands. In this, the second episode, I respond to the criticism that virtue ethics suffers from relativism. Virtue ethics ought to be rejected, some claim, because virtues, by their very nature, are local social constructs, being relative to the particular culture in which they happen to have been cultivated. Such particularism damns virtue ethics, it's said, because it cannot, in being so embedded in its own circumstances, support universals, where a universal is a moral statement, like murdering babies is wrong, which is intuitively taken to apply across the board, regardless of the cultural or historical situation. Being beholden to the ethics of one's own culture, on the other hand, effectively leaves one unable to criticise it, having no external platform from which to do so, even if one's culture happens to be rather nasty. Nor, on the same account, is the virtue ethicist able to step outside their own culture in order to criticise that of others. Virtue ethics is thus, on this criticism, weak, being unable to challenge conservatives at home or injustices abroad. Clearly a fatal weakness for the purposes of the political left. Whilst some virtue ethicists reply to this criticism by suggesting that virtue ethics is no worse off on this count than any other approach, I have little appetite for such two quoque arguments, preferring instead to seek some universal basis for virtue. The first step towards achieving this, I think, is to acknowledge that Aristotle, the progenitor of virtue ethics in the Western tradition, was not himself a relativist. His discussion of virtue, for example, makes such use of the concept of spheres as the realms in which virtues are to be judged as to strongly suggest that he maintained that certain of them, such as the fear of death, a bodily pleasure or the distribution of resources, hold common to all, universally, regardless of the accidents of convention or local history. From this neo-Aristotelian universality, I go further, suggesting that as well as diverse local communities, we are also all members of broader natural communities, communities with histories which go back further than, and indeed are foundational to, the particulars of any cultural history, histories that are likely to be manifest in those spheres of which Aristotle spoke, the fear of death, bodily pleasure, the fair distribution of resources and so forth. Virtues of a universal nature may thus, I suggest, be understood via the study, either conceptual or empirical, of those broader, deeper histories in which we are all, by virtue of our place in nature, similarly situated. An understanding which would allow us, on the left, to challenge both conservative notions of good character at home and its oppressive varieties abroad. In conclusion then, virtue ethics can, I think, respond to charges of relativism. There is then, as yet, two episodes into our exploration of criticisms of virtue ethics, nothing contrary to cogent argument in being a virtue ethicist, which is a good thing, because it's my belief that, despite its reputation for conservatism, virtue ethics better serves progressive politics than the current deontological orthodoxy which is why next time I'll be tackling another objection to virtue ethics. Thank you for listening.